Hi there everyone, welcome back to Objectivity. Look at this object. How long do you think this is? If you guessed, say, a yard, you're not just right, you're exactly right. This is officially, absolutely, one yard long. It is a standard measure, and that's what we're talking about today. We're going to talk a lot more about this, but before we do, with the help of Keith, I'm going to put this down back on the table and we're going to look at some other standard measures first. So let's go over here and check them out. So Keith has gotten these two objects out of the vaults for us. It's not hard to figure out what this is. Yeah, indeed. You can see it on there. There you go, James. The Royal Society's Troy Pound. Now a Troy Pound is different to a normal pound. I believe it weighs a bit less and it's to do with measuring precious metals. But this was, presumably at some point, the standard Troy Pound. Indeed, and a precious metal because it's made of platinum. It's made of platinum. Mm -hmm. Platinum is not cheap. Now that should just uh, unscrew for We're you. Gonna... So if you try and keep it as yep. level as you can, Brady. There we That's go. the one. Now that top will then come off. Here we go. And you will see wow. there's... Now, you need a special fork for doing that. So Guess what? Your special, yeah, your, your I have one. <laughs> Troy Pound handling fork. Lucky you remembered that. A Troy Pound, yeah, I've got one on me at all times. Of course you have. Because right. sometimes you just bump into a Troy Pound. It's actually harder to pick up with the fork then. So there we go, everyone. That is officially a Troy Pound of platinum. Look at that. Lovely. It's a beautiful thing. It is. It's just, it's just pretty. Hmm. It's just pretty. I'm being made to hold it with a fork, but it's got a few dings and marks on it, so I think you're being a bit over. Well, it has. And if you have a look at the inside of the case, though, <gasps> it's clearly got some, some lining on it, which is 19th century, uh, which is cork, and it looks like uh, maybe strips of lead in there, too which is interesting. We loaned these to Newcastle University quite recently to, so that they could research them and, and see how much they weighed. And uh, interestingly, what they found was that 19th century cleaning techniques for objects like this involved mercury. So they, they almost instantly changed the weight of these things. <laughs> Dum dums. Let's put this lid on top. There. And the, the screw thread is very, very difficult to get in. Is it? It is. I did it. You, that's, that's good. Yeah. That's a first for me. There we go. Again, not much guessing required because it says here, standard pound, 1853. This is an example of a standard pound. This is what they Indeed. would use to know what a pound was. Now this one's in glass. Number two, PC 1844. The weights and measures of, of Great Britain go right back to, to medieval times. And all of these weights and measures were stored by command in the Palace of Westminster. Now, of course, in the 19th century, the whole lot burnt down. So Britain lost its weights and measures, effectively. Wow. So is uh, that, would that be an example yeah. of mass destruction? Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> That's the sort of joke yeah, you should have made. I, I know, You're just jealous. You yeah, didn't I know, think of I didn't it. think of it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, um, the waiter... <laughs> <laughs> right there, mate. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, okay. I just thought of it. So, the weights and measures of England were destroyed. What do you do? You have to create new standards, but you also have to distribute them around. So, you're not putting all your eggs in one basket, if you like. So, uh, the Royal Society was in receipt of a standard pound. Yep. And uh, a standard something else, which we saw a moment ago. Let's go back to where we started. But first of all, I know the rules. Let's put this yep, away. Absolutely. Now I'm going to tell you something that you didn't see, but off camera, when we got this box out, it came with a lid on it like this that was all screwed on. You can still see the screws all over the table. And Keith unscrewed it for us. Mm -hmm. And then he admitted something. He has never taken this lid off before. I've never been in here before. This is quite cool. Indeed, this is so the we... first time I've seen the standard yard outside of its box. I'm seeing it for the first time, you are seeing it for the first time, and even Keith is seeing it for the first time. Hmm. Now, Sir Isaac Newton is probably the most famous master of the Royal Mint, of course, where, where things like this would have been made. 
uh, in the 19th century, it was uh, the man who was widely perceived to be the, su the su successor to Isaac Newton, uh, and that's Sir John Herschel. He's best known, again, as an astronomer, as Newton uh, was interested in the heavens, in nebulae particularly, but he became a public figure too, master of the mint, and he had a hand in the various committees who established this new set of 19th century standards. Let's have a look at a few things, because basically everything we want to know about this is very usefully already written on here. Indeed. It says it was cast in 1845. If you're wondering what it's made of, it says here it is copper, tin, one part zinc. It says here it's called Mr. Bailey's Metal Number no. 3. Francis Bailey, I would think, yeah. Okay. It says, there's, looks like there's a maker there, no. Trafton and Tr Sims. Trafton and Sims, one of, one of the great London instrument makers of the period. Perhaps most interestingly, we are reminded here that this is a standard yard, but only at 62.1 Fahrenheit. Temperature has to be absolutely exact to, to get it to measure precisely one yard. Okay, everyone, you've seen it. Keith, you've seen it. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it back in the box, put all the screws back on. It's going to get locked away for another, who knows, maybe another 150 years until mm -hmm. someone gets it out again. Yep. But for now, standard yard. My brain is interpreting his gaze to be slightly away from center now, whereas with this face, he's looking straight ahead. That is really cool. And, and these are beautiful pictures. These aren't little stick figure drawings. That's right. These yes. are drawn by a preeminent English artist.